the seated cable roll. Low pulley, low handle, the handle, whatever you want to fucking call it, the seated roll, one of the main exercises for the back, which is long forgotten now. It's been overtaken by those silly fucking movements everybody does, leaning to one side, leaning up, pulling all this fucking shit down, going on a single-handed or, or an ISO hammer strength machine, standing behind the fucking back pad, doing all this shit, and guess what? They ain't got no fucking backs. That's the fucking problem with doing funky shit. And you forget how to do the fucking basics. That is the issue. Let me show you how to do the basics. Now, first of all, the grip you want to use. <laughs> this is the best grip. When it comes to fucking back exercises, if you were going to only use one grip, this is the grip I would fucking use, okay? There's a mat grip on there as well. I know these are quite popular now inside the gym. Most gyms have these. If you look at this, very similar. Okay, this is what it wants to look like, one of these things. You don't want to go a wide handle, you don't want anything else. This is the kind of handle you want. Seeing as though it's already on, I'm going to demonstrate with this. Now, when it comes to back exercises, this is not something I would do first. I'd make sure I get my deadlifts out of the way, I'd make sure I get the pull-ups, the pull-downs out of the way, then I'd come to the rowing. And when it comes to rows, there's two things that I do for rows. One is the T-bar row, and the second is this, the cable row. So let me demonstrate. Just warming up at the minute. You might have seen many variations to this single arm. Stop doing this fucking single arm, okay? You wanna use maximum weight on this. Stretch and squeeze. If you look at the top, the top portion of it, my chest is out. It's not concave like this. I'm not leaning forward like a fucking 12 year old like these kids are doing. Don't do this fucking shit and do not do this shit as well. Don't ever roll like this. It's a fucking big exercise, your back. Use it, utilize your fucking back muscles. The back muscles are big, strong, powerful, fucking dense muscles. How do you build dense muscles? By using maximum fucking load over and over again. Heavy, explosive load. I see nowadays, people have a density fucking day yet they don't do any exercises that require heavy fucking lifting. I've seen people do density day. A fucking, I don't even know what that, I didn't even know that thing existed, but imagine this, density day, and what you're doing is single arm cable fucking rows from the high pulley, slow and controlled, focusing on your elbow. Forget that fucking bullshit, it doesn't work. We've tried and tested that, it did not work. Where are the backs? Nowhere to be fucking seen. Let's go back to the fucking basics. The Lee Haney's, the Ronnie Coleman's, the fucking Dorian Yates, the guys with the good backs. This is what they did. So let's go back now. We know the fucking single arm cable shit didn't work. Let's go back to this basic fucking exercise, please. That's enough of a fucking rant. Let me demonstrate. So what you're gonna do here is lean forward and squeeze. This is, and, because the weight's really light at the minute, it probably looks like I'm going really fast. I'm just trying to explode at the bottom. Squeeze, squeeze. That's what I want to do here. Now when it comes to pulleys and rows, you don't want to go crazy high on the reps. You don't want to be doing 15, 20 repetitions. This is one of those exercises, if done correctly, very hard to get injured. Your back is a fucking big muscle group, very strong muscle group. Use maximum weight on this. So I've warmed up now. I'm ready for my first working set. So I'm gonna go relatively heavy on this. I'm not gonna tell you what weight it is because I don't fucking know myself, okay? I know how heavy this machine is. I know what to put it on. There's all sorts of different pulleys on it. To just go example, let's give you the pulleys again. There's one, there's two, three, four, five. There's five pulleys on this. Who knows what the true weight is? And I can guarantee you one thing, the weight from here or to here is gonna be two different weights. If I pull it faster, depending on how the physics of the fucking machine work, it's gonna be completely different weight load. So stop writing in your fucking log box. Oh, today I did 50 fucking kg. Fuck that shit. When it comes to cables, don't do that shit. The only time you need to be logging any of your lifts, squat, bench, and deadlift. Anything else, fuck it. In fact, you know what? When I was doing powerlifting, I never even uh, did my squat bench and deadlift vlogging. I'll tell you why. 
because it wasn't that fucking hard, was it? When you're lifting maximum fucking weights, you'll remember you what you did the night before or the week before. When I was deadlifting every four or five days, I got to the platform and it was Friday. I knew I deadlifted on Saturday or I deadlifted on Monday. And I was like, I know what I fucking did on Monday because I can still fucking feel it. That's how heavy and hard you should be training. Not the way you do it now. Oh, I did fucking 80 kg for eight repetitions. So next week, I'm going to increase that by 2.5%. Fuck you, mate. Or increase it by a rep. Always try and beat the logbook. Who writes that logbook? You. So who gives a fuck whether you beat it or not? No one fucking cares if you beat a fucking logbook. There's a guy out there called Dorian Yates, Mr. Olympia. He had his logbooks. He wrote everything in his logbooks. Who reads his logbooks? Fucking nobody. Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates, doesn't even get his logbooks out. And if he releases his logbooks right now, who'd give a shit? Some fucking diehard bodybuilding fanatics that'd be like, oh my God, Dorian Yates did eight plates on the fucking hammer strength machine. Oh my fucking word, let's fucking use that. Who gives a fuck about what you fucking did? No one cares. Are your kid's gonna care, do they? Fuck, my daughter doesn't even know I fucking train. She doesn't even know I'm in the fucking gym. She thinks I go to work every time. She says, where have you been? I've been at work, that's it. That's what I call the gym. So stop fucking writing in your bullshit log box. Set number one. Oh yeah, another thing as well. If you, if you think that sometimes if the weight's heavy, and you can't pull it and sit down to save yourself getting injured, here's a technique to use. And this is only if the weight's heavy, because if the weight's not heavy, you're gonna fall on your fucking ass. So make sure the weight's heavy, so you can counterbalance it. And then what you wanna be doing is like this, and then just leaning back. Now, the weight's not heavy, so I don't, I don't wanna fall on my ass doing this. So I'm just gonna use one leg. Maybe the last set, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So use one leg, pull it, get set, and you put the other leg in. Now I'm in position. For the rest period between these sets, something like something like three minutes, four minutes. When I say these times as well, let me just mention something. I have never once, never ever once, looked at a fucking clock. There's a clock there, there's a clock there, and I've got a watch on. I have never once looked at the clock. How many minutes has it been for me to do my next set? I'm a little bit out of breath right now, you can tell. I just finished this set. Slowly catching my breath. If I focus on my breathing, I can bring my breathing down. Now my breathing's level. If I had a heart rate monitor on, which I have got, now my breathing's level. But I forcefully done this, like because I thought about it, I thought, right, let me slowly bring my breathing down to control. Now obviously, you don't want to be doing that every single set. Your body does that automatically, so you don't have to do it. So, when you train hard, your body is gonna tell you when it's ready. The reason why I use these time frames is because, depending on the muscle group, for example, if we were to do barbell bicep curls on the preacher bench, because it's such a small muscle group, for that to be fully recovered, it would take 30 to 40 seconds. Will, would you, will you be out of breath if you were to do a 10 rep set of a bicep curl? No. When you do these for 10 reps and you stop, you're gonna be out of breath. If you do deadlifts, three repetitions, you'll be out of breath on a fucking max weight. When you're squatting five plates for five reps, you'll be out of breath. And then you know what recovery is when you're sat there trying to catch your breath and you're panting and your body's trying to recover. You then know that's gonna take four minutes, that's gonna take five minutes. So as a newcomer, as a newbie in the gym, use that as a guideline, what I'm te telling you, three to four minutes on something like this, it's just a heavy exercise, and be like, okay, you know what? I'm now ready to go. So that is what I mean by when I say time frame. You don't have to be looking at the clock, okay? If you're a newbie, look at the fucking clock. But after that, your body will tell you when to be ready. This is set number two. Now it's really heavy, so I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean about falling back. So the counterbalance there, fall back. As you can see, I didn't land on my ass. Well, I did, but it didn't hurt. So, what you might have saw there a little bit, 
on the last rep, I exaggerated that stretch, I squeezed it. I remember the training phase that I'm in at the minute. I'm not trying to use maximum weight. I'm not here to break records. So I'm doing what is just about 70 to 80% taxing for me. In the last repetition, I like to go for the extra stretch and squeeze just to make sure I'm focusing on all the muscle fibers that I haven't hit at the start of the workout or the start of the rep, where if I was to do a stretch and a squeeze, an overly exaggerated stretch and a squeeze on every single repetition, I wouldn't be training in the correct range of motion. I'd be over exerting myself. So only do that if you're an advanced lifter and right at the end of the session. So I've got one more set left on this. Again, my breath slowly coming back. I'm recovering. Now, as you start doing this more often, every single week, you will get better and better at this. Your recovery will be better, it will be faster, and you'll be like, right, I'm ready to go again. And when you hit that stage, increase the fucking weight. <laughs> That's what that means. So same again, same technique, stand up, rock back, but make sure the weight is heavy, because if it's not fucking heavy, you are gonna land on your ass. Last set. See there, it's really heavy. Now if you wondered why I went a little bit slow after a couple of reps, it's because I need a fucking thumbnail. <laughs> That's why. But there you have it. That is the seated row, cable, low pulley, whatever you want to call it for the back. This is a mass builder, if done right. I would do this exercise over any single arm exercise. Uh, I would maybe say dumbbell rows, probably the only exercise that I wouldn't do this over. Other than that, all these high pulley attachments, these roll machines, these single pulley attachments, these dual pulley attachments, forget all that bullshit. I might demonstrate to you guys how to use it, but if you wanna build muscle, meat, slabs, density on your fucking back, this is the exercise you wanna be doing with this grip. No other funky shit, none of this. Use a wider grip so that your arms go past your fucking body. Now, nah, short on the range of motion, so we've got more fucking power, use maximum weight. That's what these exercises are there for. Lower the risk of injury when you use maximum weight, shorter range of motion. I know it's complete opposite to what you guys have been hearing on TikTok, but this is the way it is, man. I'm here to hopefully bring back that old school look, change all this fucking scientific terminology that they actually tried 40, 50 years ago, didn't fucking work, and now it's just coming full circle again. These idiots are fucking trying it again, selling you fucking bullshit, and some people are buying into it, I ain't fucking buying into it. And another thing, another thing as well I'll mention, I've tried all this shit that people are talking about. I haven't got to the stage or the level I've got to without trying everything. I've tried every single thing in the fucking gym there is. Any exercise, it's not fucking hard, is it? If you think about it, I've been training for almost 25 years. I train for at least two hours, a, two hours a day, five days a week. You do the fucking maths, how many hours I've spent in the gym. Do you not think I've got enough time on my hands to try every single exercise in the world. Yes, I have tried every single exercise and I've come to the conclusion on what's good and what's shit. And what I'm showing you right now is some of the best stuff that you're gonna see on the internet. And if you like my workout tutorials, subscribe, like, comment down below. And if you want any training programs or if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, head over to fadihussein.com.